All right, so I make a post about Frank on Instagram, you guys lose your minds. If I make a video and I don't include at least 20 seconds of Frank in it, you guys lose your mind. So today, you get your wish. A video all about Frank. For those that are not familiar with my channel, I have an entire building dedicated to aquariums and I call it my aquarium gallery. We've got a 375 here, We've got a 100 gallon below it containing Frank. An entire wall of 120 gallon tanks filled with varieties of different fish, a 2,000 gallon aquarium with freshwater stingrays and Asian arowana, a pretty awesome pond with red tail catfish, peacock bass, and giant garami, but none of that seems to matter because there's only one superstar in this gallery and it is not me. It's Frank. I guess I should kind of tell the story of Frank to those that don't know and to those that would like more information on how such an ugly little fish <laughs> became so popular. It was about, in February 2017, I went to my local fish store. I was there just to get a few things. As always, I responsibly only ever get what I'm there for. On this one very rare occasion, I walked past one of the aquariums that had a tiny little flower horn in it, and we connected on a molecular level. Uh, it was as if we were soulmates. He was doing flips for me, and I immediately knew that these flips were, were sign language for take, take me home, Joey. He, of course, knew my name. <laughs> I got him and I brought him home. But I didn't bring him home because he was an amazing looking flower horn. You see, when it comes to flower horns, Frank isn't really that nice. In fact, he doesn't have many of the desirable traits that people are looking for in serious flower horn keepers. First and foremost, what is a flower horn? Flower horn is a man-made fish. They don't exist in the wild. Uh, a bunch of South American, potentially Central American cichlids were crossbred multiple times to create a monstrosity of the flower horn. In my opinion, they're absolutely beautiful and I've always loved them. I've got nothing against them, but there's always the purists that absolutely hate hybrids. I'm not one of them. I embrace them, especially a fish with so much personality and uh, so unique looking. With that said, there's many different strains of flower horns and it would be difficult for me to explain what people actually want in the flower horn when there's so many. So let me tell you what Frank is lacking. Maybe you guys want to know what the word flower horn means and why they're called that in the first place. There's multiple different uh, theories, but most will say that the flower horn, the flower portion comes from the black markings. Oh, what are you doing, Frank? Behind his head. The horn, of course, comes from the huge bump on his head, which is called uh, a nuchal hump, or I'm not gonna say it on camera because there's children that watch, but it's uh, spelt K-O-K. -K. It's pronounced exactly as you think it is. Frank doesn't have a very large nuchal hump, and in a flower horn strain like this, you definitely want a large, massive hump. The flowers also go down their entire sides. Now, a lot of in the Asian culture believe this fish is lucky because some of the flowers, the black markings that go down the sides, sometimes uh, look like Chinese markings and numbers or letters. So a lot of the times you want those flowers to have a full row. Frank doesn't have those either. Now if you look closely on the sides of his body, Frank you need to stop. If you look closely on the sides of his body, you'll also notice that there's some iridescent dots. Well these are called the pearls on a flower horn and in this strain you want the full body to be just covered in these pearls. Frank is kind of sporadic in that sense. He doesn't have very many. He also has a distended belly or distended belly. Uh, you can see how fat his gut is. He's not constipated. He's not overfed. Nothing like that. He just has poor genetics. Now, most flower horns will have a pretty big, you know, rib cage just because this is how the, the short body flower horn came to be is they kept breeding them and breeding them and selectively breeding them until they're short and compact. I think Frank is somewhere in between but he does have a pretty big gut. His finnage isn't also all that nice. It should be much more longer and flowing. So overall, Frank is a pretty poor quality flower horn, but that's not why we love him. That's not why we got him. Frank became Frank based on his personality. He's a fun fish. He's just interesting. And in my opinion, he's become a meme. So I guess that's a little bit on Frank. Let me bring you back to the story. 
You see, I got Frank and I took him home immediately to a 15 gallon aquarium that I originally built. That might seem like a small tank for such a little fish, and Frank was only maybe two inches, uh, two and a half inches at the time. Probably the same size as Francine, or maybe a little smaller than her. The thing with flower horns, though, is you don't want to take them and put them in a big tank right away, in my opinion. And we're going to get into a bit of flower horn care as well. However, if you take a flower horn and you put them in a 100 gallon tank right away, or like a 75 or 120, 75 to 120 gallons is great for a flower horn, because these guys get to like up to 12 inches long, sometimes a little bigger, a little shorter, give or take type of deal, depending on the genetics and strain. Uh, but in my opinion and experience with flower horns, you want the flower horn to grow with the aquarium because the aquarium in a sense is its sense of security. If I were to take him and put him into a big tank right away, he'd get lost in it. He'd be entertained, he'd have plenty of room. Um, he would just end up being a basic fish and lose the personality traits. Now that might seem cruel to put him in a small aquarium, but it almost forces them to interact with the owner. So I guess Frank is who he is based on how he was kind of raised up and many flower horn keepers do that. So if you are interested in a flower horn, that is kind of a key benefit is you can kind of start them off in a smaller tank and progressively get bigger as they grow. But make no mistake, these guys do get big, they get bosterous, and they could be pretty mean. After that 15 gallon tank, we put them in a 30 gallon tank that used to be a planter tank. I also built that one out of acrylic. And I also built that tank in this exact location in the old garage that used to be here in place of the gallery. And that sat in my office for quite a while. I think it was about six months later, July of 2017, the 2000 gallon aquarium was ready for fish and Frank was the first fish to go into the 2000 gallon aquarium. Buddy was next. Fun fact about that video when I showed you guys it. Um, adding the fish to the 2000 gallon aquarium, that video hit the number one trending video on YouTube and stayed there for two days. Frank is the first and only aquarium fish to ever hit the number one trending video based on being an actual aquarium video, not like just a side attraction that happened to be in there. Frank is arguably the most famous flower horn in the world. And look at him. Oh, we love you though, Frank. Is that why you're mad at me, bro? Frank did well in the 2000. Uh, we eventually put the stingrays in there. Everybody was getting along, but a lot of you said that you'd never seen Frank and so forth. And in my opinion, he was doing okay in there. Uh, but at times the arowana would chase him away or Frank would come out and chase him away. It just ended up being problems. Uh, so we put him in this 100 gallon aquarium. Now I built this to originally quarantine the stingrays that uh, are now in the 2000. Frank stayed in that tank in the main room for quite a while until uh, I wanted to move the 375 in here. I thought, hey, let's put Frank under here as well. Frank, this is the most trafficked area and I actually spend the most time in this room. So Frank gets plenty of attention. Oh, and in the meantime, we also did some Frank merch, which was uh, awesome. I see more Frank shirts than my own DIY shirts. I'm not going to say I'm bothered, but as a side story, Frank's popularity was not my doing. I never meant for Frank to become popular and at times it was kind of like, why is this fish so popular? Why why not um, my arowana has so many cool fish? Why is Frank like, like have a legitimate fan base? And I think it just comes down to the fact that Frank was the first fish I ever named and we gave him a human name being Frank and, and it kind of humanized him. We gave him that name like a year ago, year and a half ago. But as is, he's probably about two years old now and eight or nine inches long. He's in this tank and, and to kind of make up for moving him so much, I got him a little girlfriend and we named her Francine. <laughs> this is a little female flower horn. And at first we uh, had her in quarantine for about six weeks. I quarantine all my fish, regardless of where they come from or my experience in past quarantining, all new fish quarantined four to six weeks, sometimes even less if I, if I medicate or what have you. But that said, we put her in here and they were sectioned off for about two weeks just to get them used to each other because flower horns are not that nice of a fish, generally speaking, but their personalities are such a broad spectrum that you never know what you're going to get. Maybe you'll get a nice flower horn like Frank let me show you. He's hungry right now, so maybe he won't let me. Maybe Francine will bite me. I've never actually touched Francine. Ah, oh, Francine's a jumper. That's why the water level's low, because these guys can sometimes jump. But uh, 
Frank's a nice, nice little fella. I can pet him. We're best friends. We tell stories. We have pillow fights. We don't do any pet. But anyway, sometimes you can get a nice flower horn like Frank, which is Frank is like a roll of the dice. Sometimes he's nice, sometimes he's not. So sectioning them off was a good idea just to get them used to it. Frank ended up busting down the divider and releasing Francine. Uh, I never seen it happen, but now they get along. They kind of uh, locked lips for a little while. For the first little while they were together and Frank had a fat lip because uh, Francine's an abusive wife. Um, they're not officially married, but they've been together for a while. Frank calls her her wife. They're just common law right now. Uh, I'm not sure when the wedding is. Frank hasn't proposed, but uh, they are getting along after the lip lock and deciding who's boss. Uh, Francine is definitely the boss until Frank's like had enough. He'll chase her under the wood. And I did place this fake wood in here uh, just to give Francine a little bit of a hiding place. Maybe they'll lay eggs on it. And it's kind of a natural look, I guess. But ultimately, I could have just put in some flower pots and they would have been fine as well. Now, I know many of you guys want like a flower horn care video. And based on my experience, I'd say it is actually pretty limited with flower horns. Frank's like my sixth flower horn. Um, but they all share one thing in common. I prefer to keep them in bare tanks, bare bottom, just for easier maintenance and for them not to injure themselves. They do become a pretty big fish. And uh, big bosters fish do have a tendency to get hurt on decorations within the aquarium. So you kind of have to sacrifice there. There are small things that you could put in, flower pots, maybe a piece of wood, but it's not going to be an aquascape tank for two reasons. One, they can get hurt on it too. They're gonna rearrange the tank regardless of what you do. Uh, you can put a substrate in if you like. I did just to add to the aesthetics of the rest of the gallery. The rest of the tanks mostly have substrate uh, and it is a fine grain. So uh, anything collects on top. I feed these guys a variety of foods from fresh frozen foods like shrimp and tilapia to flower horn pellets, uh, cichlid pellets, pretty much anything these guys will eat. What I found with them as well is that they're pretty indestructible once they become established and eating. Uh, they can pretty much withstand any water parameters, including some pretty foul water. Uh, of course, that's kind of cruel to do, and they can be susceptible to hole in the head based on the size of their heads. Uh, so water quality should probably be pretty pristine, as you should with any fish. I do water changes once a week, 50%, 30%, whatever I kind of have time for. And these guys do just fine, feeding them once to twice a day. Uh, the only real deal, the only real things I focus on is the temperature of the aquarium. I keep it at around 25, 26 degrees Celsius. You can keep it a little warmer or a little cooler. Again, these guys will put up with almost anything. The downside to flower horn is it has to almost be a pet fish. It's really difficult to add in other fish to these aquariums. Um, this is going to be a roll of the dice. They can attack or they might get along. It's kind of up to you and what you want to do. I don't think Frank chases her. I think he plays with her. He's never actually bitten her, but you can see him kind of, it's almost like they're playing tag or something. I could watch these guys for quite a while. Um, when I'm not directly in front of the tank, they interact far more. Uh, she'll often go around him in circles and uh, Frank just lets her. It's gonna be really interesting if they ever lay eggs. You might be wondering, how do you tell the difference between the sexes? It's gotta wait until they're about uh, her size. Um, usually the female will have the black flowers that we talked about earlier along her dorsal fin and back and the males won't. That's usually one of the first things you can see. Also their nuchal humps will be more soft, not as prominent or hard. Um, as you can see with, uh, you know, like a lot of cichlids will always think that the males will have the pointed dorsals and anal fins. Females do as well. I guess the number one way to tell if a female is a female is She's the one that lays the eggs. So maybe just wait until you find one laying eggs. But if these guys do have babies, I think it would be pretty awesome. Um, I got the female just for the memes and, and just to, just to uh, it's just a fun aquarium. Frank's a fun fish to have. And I've really embraced the fact that he's so popular and you know got over it. It was just like me being jealous that the other fish are not as popular as Frank, but maybe I should start naming them soon. Um, I'd never remember everybody's names, and I don't think everybody needs a name. I'm gonna name my lionfish though, and I have a name picked out. Nobody knows it yet. I'll tell you guys what it is soon. Anyways, guys, that's the story of Frank. Um, a little bit of information on flower horns. I'm not even sure what I said. 
If you have any other questions, comments, concerns, or you want to add to it, make sure you do in the comments section below. Also, this was just a really quick video on Frank. I know that a proper video should take anywhere between three to six years to properly produce and justify. So um, I hope this satisfies you at least for now.